Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Lorraine Byrne Bodley, and I'm Professor of Musicology at Maynooth University, and I'm President of the Society for Musicology in Ireland. When Kira asked me to speak, I jumped at the opportunity to express a few very brief but very sincere words of thanks and congratulations. I've organised a number of international conferences myself, mentored graduate students through them, and also overseen nine conferences now as SMI president. So I'm well aware of the joys and um, the value of rallying people around to share research, but at the same time, I'm equally aware of the amount of work that goes into it. So as SMI president, one of the many things I've learned is just how much people give all the time time every year. In each term of office, we have six conferences, one plenary, one graduate conference each year. The Society for Music Education in Ireland organises an annual conference. ICTM also organise a graduate conference with us and their plenary conference. So that's six conferences um, uh, every year in addition to the numerous um, study days and thematic conferences which happen around the country. Often there have been as many as 15 conferences every year, um, at least seven every year. So as a small country, that's a huge amount of musicological activity going on all the time, in addition to the work that we do as teachers, as researchers, the demands of university and everyday life. So I want to thank publicly, um, very warmly and very sincerely, the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance for hosting this SMI conference. I want to pay particular tribute to the department head, Dr. Sandra Joyce. Sandra gave a fabulous paper in Maynooth in October on songs of the travelling community, and I had a chance to talk to her then. And I know just how busy she is, but she still found time to give priority to this conference. And it's also the first time that the University of Limerick have hosted an SMI conference. Gareth and Michael in Limerick have been very strong supporters of the SMI and have hosted numerous conferences in Limerick and Mary Mac. But it's the first time here at the Academy and we're so appreciative of that. We all know how people we love can be so present to us in their absence. And I'm very aware this weekend of the legacy of Michal O'Sullivan, with whom I served on the SMI steering committee in 2002 to 2003. John O'Flynn and I took time recently to reflect on his incredible achievements to Irish cultural life as a performer, a composer, an academic, an educational innovator, broadcaster and writer, and we published that anniversary tribute in our SMI newsletter in November. I won't repeat all of that here, um, but in the context of so many wonderful graduate papers this weekend, I absolutely must acknowledge how tirelessly Michal worked to help others understand the transformative power of music. The last time I saw him, he strolled into Westminster Cathedral to catch a premiere of one of Shorsh's works while he was in London visiting one of his sons. He was the last person I was expecting to turn up there. But looking back on that gesture, I can see it was very characteristic of his readiness to celebrate others and also how he had his finger on the pulse all the time, no matter where he was. So on behalf of the SMI, I want to pay very sincere tribute to our late colleague for an extraordinary contribution to music in Ireland. He's responsible not only for the building we're sitting in here, but his unfailing recognition of how much talent, how much energy was waiting to be nurtured into musical lives, I feel is very much evident here all weekend in this conference. Helen Lawler, Chair of ICTM Ireland, is an absolute joy to work with. We've been plotting and planning a joint ICTM SMI plenary conference, which will take place the last weekend in May 2021, which will be my very last duty as President. 
I'm absolutely thrilled Trinity will host the plenary conference. It's the first time that they've hosted an SMI plenary conference, so it really will be a very special celebration, as will be the plenary in June 2020 this year, which the joint organisers and secretaries, Anika Babel and Owen Corrigan, are here, and they're organising it with Professor Harry White, an extended programme committee, so we're very grateful to you. The deadline is the 31st of January uh, 2020, and we really welcome papers. I, of course, want to single out the marvellous conference team, who really deserve special mention. Anna Camillo, Kira Thompson, Felix Morgenstern, and Halle Yaber. Um, I've noticed with admiration, as Helen mentioned yesterday, the professional tone you struck right from the very first email. And I'm really grateful to each of you um, for the energy that you've given to make these two days possible. I was already impressed, but I heard from Kira yesterday that all of you are writing up and in your final year, so it takes a very special energy to undertake organising a conference at that time, so thank you so much. I want to single out one other student who deserves very special mention, that's Brian Whitelaw, um, who is our student rep on the SMI. Um, Brian has undertaken so many activities on behalf of the society that I could write a whole speech about him. But I will just single out two things. One is he's responsible for recording tonight's keynote lecture and has set up a YouTube channel which he uploads those on and edits them. And I also want to thank him for the organisation of the Careers Forum, which we've just heard, and thank the four speakers. Cara O'Brien from the University of Limerick, um, Joe Davies from Maynooth University and Oxford University, Magella Boland, who is from Music Literacy Ireland, and Susan Brodigan from the Contemporary Music um, Centre. And I'm sure um, all speakers will allow me to privilege um, just this Contemporary Music Centre because they've had an extraordinary connection with the SMI for many, many years and are always really active in their research and always ready to help and to collaborate with us. So I want to acknowledge that today and to thank each of our four speakers at a time when it's very challenging for postgraduate students finishing up and we're very grateful to you for travelling to Limerick to share your experience with them. It's really important and I personally am very grateful to you and I know I speak on behalf of all of my colleagues. <coughs> The other reason that I wanted to speak was to acknowledge and thank the efforts of every single student who has worked hard to present their work this weekend. Um, last year was a very busy year for me, as I'm sure it was for each of you in every way. I was away at eight different conferences or book launches or lectures or festivals, and each of them held something very special for me. Maybe it's through getting older or through being president and working so closely with the society, or maybe it's through my own work um, with my graduate students. Um, but I think that this is one of the events of the year, which means really so much to me. <clears throat> I think the graduate conference has a very special atmosphere. It's incredibly energizing to see all of you to present your work, and it's wonderful to see the the discipline flourishing and in such good hands. Everyone can see the range of research at the heart of the conference. We've lived through and enjoyed papers over the past two days together. So I'm not going to single out um, examples of papers to show that diversity, but I'll just finish up by saying two things. I mentioned at the beginning um, that I understood what it was like to organise um, a conference. And I'm thinking back of a late Schubert conference that I organised with our colleague and dear friend Julian Horton in 2011. And um, Julian and I made a pact that we, before we retire, we would organise just one more conference of the worst papers that we've ever heard in our entire career. And well, I'm happy to say that nobody this weekend <laughs> made it onto that invitation list. But what struck me most forcefully this weekend, and which is why I single out the postgraduate conference as being one of the events that I really value most this year, is because we're all here because of love. Love of our subject, love of knowledge, love of writing, love of music, love of performing, love of the repertoire we perform, love of our students, love of our colleagues, love of Alison Dunlop, who we remember and whose work we revere. 
So beyond the long hours that you've spent in preparation, which has made this conference possible, and for which I thank each and every one of you, it's really your passion for your subject which drives your need to expand your knowledge and to share it with us. And it's that which has made this conference really special. So in the same spirit, it's my great pleasure and privilege to introduce our keynote speaker, Philip Bullman, Ludwig Rosenberger, Distinguished Service Professor of Jewish History and Professor of Music at the University of Chicago. Professor Bullman has been teaching there since 1987, having received his doctorate from the University of Illinois in 1984. The generosity of his 33 years of service has been recognized in numerous awards, including the Faculty Award for Excellence in Graduate Teaching from the University of Chicago in 1999. It's also evident from his service at the Resource Faculty of Germanic Studies, the German Department, and the Mary Marty Center for the Advanced Study of Religion, the Center for Jewish Studies, the Center for European and Russian um, Eurasian Studies, the Divinity School, and the Scherer Center for the Study of American Culture. Since 2009, Professor Bullman has taught and conducted workshops in Germany at the University of Hildesheim and the Hochschule für Musik, Theater und Medien in Hanover, where he is also an honorary professor. He's held guest professorships at numerous universities, including the University of California, Berkeley, the University of Freiburg, the University of Vienna, is Distinguished Visiting Professor of Ethnomusicology and Ritual Studies at Yale University, and also the Mark Bloch Center um, in Berlin in the Summer Academy from 2011 to 2013, among others, including a visiting professorship and the Rosenzweig Professorship, which the University of Kassel awarded him in 2014. He was also made Fellow of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences in 2011 and Corresponding Fellow of the British Academy in 2007. Ten years earlier, he had been the first ethnomusicologist to receive the Edward Gent Medal from the Royal Musical Association. And he's also received the Berlin Prize from the American Academy in Berlin in 2003 and the Derek Allen Prize from the British Academy in 2007. Phil's research draws upon diverse methods and perspectives in music scholarship to forge an ethnomusicology built upon foundations in ethnography, history and performance. He's particularly interested in exploring the interstices between music and religion, music, race and colonial encounter, and music and nationalism. The study of Jewish music and modernity has provided a primary focus for his research for four decades and since 1998 has provided the context for his activities as a performer, both as artistic director of the New Budapest Orpheum Society, the Jewish Cabaret and Ensemble in Residence at the Humanities Division in Chicago, and in stage performances with Christina Wilkie Bullman of works of, for piano and dramatic speaker created during the Holocaust. Phil has had the most extraordinary career as both a scholar and a performer, with his ensemble, he's released four CDs, most recently as Dreams Fall Apart, The Golden Age of Jewish Stage and Film Music, 1925 to 1955, um, released by Sedilla Records in 2014. His work in historical performance has been recognized by a Noel Greenberg Award from the American Musicological Society, and as mentioned, the Don Donald Tovey Prize from Oxford University. Since 2008, Professor Bullman has been conducting research in India, especially Kolkata, Varanasi, and in rural West Bengal. His research on the European Song Society, Eurovision Song Society contest is ongoing, and many of you will be familiar with that from his OUP blog post. He's a prolific author or editor of many books in English and in German, with translations in numerous languages. <coughs> The first edition of Music, Nationalism and Making of New Europe received the Derek Allen Prize for Musicology from the British Academy. His edited volume, The Cambridge History of World Music, received the 2015 Bruno Nettle Prize from the Society for Ethnomusicology. 
in 2016, Phil and the new Budapest Orpheum Society were nominated for a Grammy Award for their double CD, As Dreams Fall Apart. Most recently, he's published Hans Eisler in Der Musikist as Anders with his daughter Andrea Bullmann, published by Hendrik and Hendrich in 2012. Balkan epic, Song, History, Modernity, published by Scarecrow Press in 2012. Revival and Reconciliation, Sacred Music in the Making of European Modernity, also Scarecrow Press 2013. And most recently, Versengen wir seinen Gesang auf dem Boden der Fremde, um, published by Lit Verlag in 2019. Other publications include Songs, Loves and Masses, Herda on Music and Nationalism, the University of California Press 2017, and I now give a sample of edited volumes. The Cambridge History of World Music, published in 2013, this thing called Music Essays in Honour of Bruno Nettle, um, published by Roman and Littlefield in 2015. Resounding Transcendence, Transitions in Music, Religion and Ritual, published by Oxford in 2016, Jazz World's World, Jazz in Chicago 2016, and Sounding Cities, Auditory Transformations in Berlin, Chicago and Calcutta, also published by Lit Verlag in 2017. Phil's current research includes an introduction to the study of ethnomusicology for Cambridge University Press, a book on music and global nationalisms for Oxford <coughs> University Press, um, with fellowship support from the Alexander von Humboldt uh, Foundation. He conducts ongoing research on the rise of modern music scholarship in Berlin for his project, Jüdische Musikforschung in Berlin, 1900 bis 1950. In 2015, he collaborated with colleagues at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and at the University of Illinois to inaugurate a multi-year project, the, music of world, the History of World Music Recording, as part of the Mellon Foundation's Humanity Without Walls initiative. In his spare time, after all of that, I know he's a terrific mentor and very supportive of his students, and he's also served on numerous editorial boards, including Grove Music Online, and various editorial boards, for various journals, including Ethnomusicology, Music and Anthropology, the Journal of Musicological Research, the Journal of Musicology, European Meetings in Ethnomusicology, Musica Judaica, and the International Review of Aesthetics and Sociology of Music. And with, as with every team I've taken here, this is just a selection. Phil, in the midst of all of that, you've been a tremendous friend to musicology in Ireland on your many visits here, including the Musicology in Ireland Symposium in 2012 in UCD, which was the last time we met, and more recently contributing to Harry's Festschrift. So it's a huge honour to welcome you warmly here from the moment that you accepted the invitation. We've all been looking forward tremendously to your keynote, and I know it will be one of the highlights of our year. So you're warmly welcome. <laughs>